Hello, we are The Firm. I'm Christopher Lee, and I'll be your first narrator. The fundamental finance principle. A manager shouldn't invest in any business idea unless it will increase the market value of the firm. So we're going to keep this in mind as we analyze and go through our stocks. So to start off, we'll be analyzing our portfolio based on the closing date of May 1st, 2019. As a quick summary, our total gain was 47,947.37, an increase of 4.79%. Overall, Netflix, Disney, and Amazon performed substantially well, with a total gain increase of 5.5%, 23.29%, and 17.8% respectively. Nike did all right with a 1.37% increase of total gain, while Spotify, Direxion, Daily, Junior, Gold Miners, and Boeing didn't, with a net loss of 7.5%, 34.32%, and 8.6% respectively. So instead of analyzing all of our stocks, we will be focusing on four different stocks, two of which exceeded our expectations and two of which we lost money on. We're starting our analysis with Amazon. Based in Seattle, Washington, Amazon is a multinational technology company that focuses on e-commerce. With its acquisition of companies such as Whole Foods, Zappos, and the streaming platform Twitch, Amazon shows no signs of slowing down. It became the second company to hit $1 trillion after Apple. Amazon first went public in 1997 with its stock being $18 a share. We bought 220 shares of Amazon at 1,622.65, and its price now is 1,911.52. So we made a total of 63,551.40, an increase of 17.8%. Next, we have Disney, and like Amazon, Disney is well known around the world. Based in Burbank, California, Disney is a multinational mass media and entertainment company. With its acquisition of Pixar, Lucasfilm, and most recently 21st Century Fox, Disney is a force to be reckoned with. Disney went public in 1957 with its stock being $13.88 a share. We bought 1,021 shares of Disney at 110.62 and its price now is 136.32. So we made a total of 26,300.96, an increase of 23.29%. The reason there's such a skyrocket in this stock in the middle of April is attributed to Disney announcing its own streaming service, Disney Plus. It jumped nearly 12% to 130.6. Boeing, my own personal stock pick, based in Chicago, Illinois, Boeing dominates as the world's largest aerospace company and is a manufacturer for an entire industry, ranging from commercial airplanes to defense systems and space stations. Boeing went public in 1978, with its stock being around $1 to almost $2 a share. We bought 200 shares of Boeing at 409.96, and its price now is 376.80, so we lost a total of 6,632, a decrease of 8.9%. The reason there's such a steep decline in March is attributed to Boeing's 737 MAX 8 model plane crash shortly after takeoff, killing 157 people on board. Because of that, the stock dropped by over 10%. Spotify, based in Stockholm, Sweden, Spotify is an audio streaming platform. Launched in 2008, it has now more than 170 million users and is trying to become the world's number one audio platform. Spotify went public in 2018 with its stock being 165.90 a share. We bought 700 shares of Spotify at 146.85, and its price now is 136.57, so we lost a total of 7,245, a decrease of 7.5%. As of April 15th, its stock fell more than 4% after Amazon was reportedly launching its own music streaming service. But the brighter side, it has become the first music streaming platform to reach 100 million subscribers. Income Statement Moving forward, as you can see, these are very simplified versions of the company's income statements. The top two are our high-performing stocks, and the bottom two are our low-performing stocks. If you look at Amazon, you have your revenue, which is your total amount of money earned by a company, your cost of goods sold, which are the explicit costs involved with producing goods, your gross profit, which is the company's profit when you subtract your revenue and cost of goods sold, and your net income, which is the profit a company makes after subtracting all its expenses. Amazon here has an increase of 42.16% in gross profit and an incredible increase of 232.11% in net income. Disney has a different fiscal year from the rest, but it's also doing really well with an increase of 7.6% in gross profit and an increase of 40.29% in net income. Boeing has an increase of 12.9% in gross profit and an increase of 23.67% in net income. And Spotify has an increase of 59.36% in gross profit, but has a negative change of 91.68% in net income. Net profit margin. To calculate net profit margin, the formula is net income divided by revenue. So what this means is for every dollar in sales, the company has approximately this amount in sales after paying for all their expenses. Net profit margin. Here we have net profit margin. It is the percent of revenue remaining after all expenses have been deducted from sales. 
If a company has a positive net profit, this means the company made more money than it spent. On the other hand, a negative net profit margin means that the company spent more money than it made. Looking at Amazon, it has a net profit margin of 4%, meaning the company makes about 4 cents of profit for every dollar of sales. Disney makes 21 cents back on its dollar, Boeing makes 10 cents back on its dollar, and Spotify loses 1 cent back on its dollar. Now I will give it over to Caitlin. Thank you, Chris. So hi, my name is Caitlin Chu, and I will be your second narrator. So using the Earnings Before Tax, or EBT, profit margin formula is a great tool for comparing companies as it removes the effects of taxes as each company's tax rates may be different. For instance, all U.S.-based corporations have the same tax rates at the federal level but not at the state level. So the formula for EBT profit margin is EBT divided by revenue. Uh, so this means that for every dollar in sales, the company approximately has this amount after paying every expense except for taxes. So here are our EBT profit margin calculations for the four stocks that we are analyzing. As you can see, all of the stocks that we have displayed have positive EBT profit margins with the exception of Spotify. Spotify, one of our lower performing stocks, has a negative EBT profit margin. This means that they haven't retained enough money after all their expenses except for taxes. This illustrates that there is something wrong with either their cost of goods sold or their operating expenses. To determine this, we will use the other profit margin formulas. So moving on, we have the gross profit margin formula. To calculate gross profit margin, you divide gross profit by revenue. So this profit margin means that for every dollar in sales, the company is left with this amount after paying for cost of goods sold. Here are our gross profit margin calculations for the four stocks we are analyzing. As you can see, our two well-performing stocks, Amazon and Disney, have a gross profit margin around 40%, which means that they are working efficiently in terms of their manufacturing process. On the other hand, we can see from here that Spotify has a positive gross profit margin in comparison to their negative EBT profit margin. This means that Spotify's cost of goods sold isn't the reason why this company isn't doing well. Therefore, this leaves us with checking with their operating profit margin. So in order to calculate operating profit margin, you divide operating income by revenue. So the operating profit margin formula means that for every dollar in sales, the company is left with this amount after paying for cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Here we have our operating profit margin calculations for the four stocks that we are analyzing today. As illustrated, Spotify has a negative operating profit margin. Due to the fact that we have already calculated the other profit margin formulas, we know that cost of goods sold and taxes are not the reason as to why their profit margins are not great. Therefore, this means that the problem lies in their operating expenses. So if Spotify wants to become better or more efficient, I believe that based on the profit margin formulas, Spotify should work on becoming more efficient in their operating expenses. Moving on we have free cash flow. So free cash flow is the amount of cash available from operations after paying for investments in net operating working capital and fixed assets. This means that more money is available to pay shareholders, dividends, bondholders, and interest. So in order to calculate free cash flow, we have four steps. The first step is to convert the income statement from the accrual to cash basis. The second step is to calculate the investment in net operating working capital. The third step is to calculate investment gross fixed assets. Last, the fourth step is calculating free cash flow. Here are our free cash flow calculations for the four stocks that we are analyzing. As you can see, all four stocks have positive free cash flow. This means that all four companies have enough money to pay their shareholders, dividends, bondholders, and etc.
Now I will be handing it off to Adam, who will be your third narrator. Hi, my name is Adam, and I will be talking about the current ratio. To calculate a company's current ratio, you will have to divide its current assets by their current liabilities. And this measures if a firm has enough resources to meet its short-term obligations. For Amazon, their current assets for 2018 were $75,101,000,000 and their current liabilities were $68,391,000,000 and this made their current ratio 1.09 meaning that for every dollar they had in current liabilities they had a dollar nine cents in current assets. For Disney, their current ratio was 0.86, meaning for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they would have 86 cents in current assets. As well as for Boeing, they had 1.07 as their current ratio, meaning for their for every dollar in their current liabilities, they would have a dollar seven cents in current assets. And for Spotify, their current ratio was 1.04. So for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they had a dollar four cents in current assets. To calculate a firm's quick ratio, you will need to subtract current assets with their inventory and divide it by their current liabilities. For Amazon, they had a quick ratio of 0.84, meaning for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they had 84 cents in current assets. For Disney, their quick ratio was 0.79, so for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they had 79 cents in current assets. For Boeing, their quick ratio was 0.3, meaning for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they had 30 cents in current assets. And for Spotify's quick ratio, it was 1.04. So for every dollar in their current liabilities, they had a dollar and four cents in their current assets. To calculate a company's average collection period, you will need to divide their accounts receivable by their daily credit sales. To obtain the daily credit sales, you will need to divide the company's sales by the amount of days in their time period. For us, Amazon, Disney, Boeing, and Spotify all had a year, so we will be dividing their sales by 365. And the average collection period means the amount of days it takes to the convert the accounts receivable to cash. For Amazon, their average collection period was 25.46, meaning that it takes roughly 25 days to convert their accounts receivable to cash. For Disney, their average collection period is 57.26, meaning it takes almost 57 days to convert their accounts receivable to cash. For Boeing, their average collection period is 51.82, meaning that it takes almost 52 days to convert their accounts receivable to cash. And for Spotify, their average collection period is 27.05, meaning they need 27 days to convert their accounts receivable to cash. To calculate a company's inventory turnover, you will need to divide their cost of goods sold by their inventory. And inventory turnover means the number of times that their inventory sells out during the time period. For Amazon, their inventory turnover was 8.1, meaning that they sold their inventory out eight times during 2018. For Disney, their inventory turnover was 25.68, meaning that they almost sold out their inventory 26 times in 2018. For Boeing, their inventory turnover was 1.3, meaning they roughly sold out their inventory once during 2018. And for Spotify, their inventory turnover was zero because they do not have an inventory as they are a virtual based company. To calculate a company's return on investment, you will need to divide their operating income by their total assets. For Amazon, their return on investment was 
zero seven, meaning that for every dollar they had in total assets, they had seven cents in operating income. For Disney, their return on investment was point fifteen, meaning for every dollar they had in total assets, they had fifteen cents in operating income. For Boeing, their return on investment was point nineteen, meaning for every dollar they had in total assets they had 19 cents in operating income and for Spotify since they had a negative operating income their return on investment was negative 0.01 meaning for every dollar they had in total assets they lost a cent in operating income and now I will hand it over to Jack hello this is George and Chen in the next few slides I'm going to talk about the total assets turnover, time interest earned, and debt ratio. Here, we're talking about the assets turnover ratio. Why the assets turnover ratio is important is because it's an efficiency ratio that measures a company's ability to generate sales from its assets by comparing net sales with average total assets. In other words, the ratio show how efficiently a company can use its assets to generate sales. Generally, the higher the assets turnover ratio, the more efficiently a company. Conversely, if a company has a low assets turnover ratio, it indicates it is not efficiently using its assets to generate sales. The following chart shows the assets turnover ratio. Looking at the Boeing, it has point. 88 assets turnover ratio, which means that for every dollar assets they have, they can create 88 cents revenue from it. Amazon is 1.58, which is a very positive number for a company to have. Spotify also have a high turnover ratio, which is 1.41. These two companies are doing a good job generating revenue from its assets. Disney has only 0.61 meaning that they are not using their assets efficiently enough. Next, we are going to talk about the debt ratio. The debt ratio compares a company's total debt to its total assets. This provides creditors and investors with a general idea as to the amount of leverage being used by a company. The lower the percentage, the less leverage a company is using, and the stronger is equity precision. In general, the higher the ratio, the more risk that the company is considered to have taken on. Amazon has the debt ratio of 0.73, means that for every dollar the company has in assets, it has 73 cents worth of liabilities. Disney has 45 cents worth of liabilities of its dollar assets. Spotify has 52 cents worth of liability of its dollars. Boeing has the highest $1 worth of liabilities, meaning that the company needs to commit a significant portion of its ongoing cash flow to the payment of principal and interest on this debt. Other than that, Amazon, Disney, and Spotify are doing just fine on debt. Next, we are going to talk about the time interest earned. Time interest earned is a metric used to measure a company's ability to meet its debt obligations. The formula is calculated by taking a company's earnings before interest and taxes, which we call EBIT, and dividing it by the total interest. Time interest earned in indicates how many times a company can cover its interest charge on a pre-tax earning basis. Basically, the higher the times interest earn ratio, the more likely it is that the corporation will be able to meet its interest payments. Failing to meet this obligation could force a company into bankruptcy. So the following chart shows the time interest earned for the four company. Amazon has time interest earn of 8.77. Disney has the time interest earn of 21.76, Boeing is 24.93, and Spotify is 10.75. We can tell that all four companies' time interest earn are very high, and the number are all greater than one, so that they should be able to generate enough cash from its earning before interest and taxes to meet its interest obligations. 
It means all four companies should not have any problems on paying their interest. Now I'm passing on to Tessin. Return on equity is the measure of a company's annual return, which is net income, divided by the value of its total shareholder's equity. Return on equity can also be derived by dividing the firm's dividend growth rate by its earning retention rate, which is 1 minus dividend payout ratio. Return on equity is a two-part ratio and is derivation because it brings together the income statement and the balance sheet, where net income or profit is compared to the shareholder's equity. The number represents the total return on equity capital and shows the firm's ability to turn assets into profits. To put it another way, it measures the profits made for each dollar from shareholders' equity. Return on equity helps the investors to choose the company where they need to invest on. Basically, it tells the investors to choose the company and invest on that company which had higher ROE. From our stock analysis, we can see that Amazon has the ROE of 231.3%, Disney has the ROE of 4229.7%, Boeing has the ROE of 4229.7%, which is same as Disney, and Spotify has the ROE of negative 190.2%. A real interest rate is an interest rate that has been adjusted to remove the effects of inflation to reflect the real cost of funds to the borrower and the real yield to the lender to an investor. Real rate adjusts for inflation and gives the real rate of a bond or loan, whereas a nominal interest rate refers to the interest rate before taking inflation into account. Nominal can also refer to the advertised or stated interest rate on a loan without taking into account any fees or compounding of interest. Nominal rate shows the raw rate of return, real rate shows the real rate of return which is adjusted for inflation. Nominal rate can be calculated in two different ways. First way is nominal rate equal to real rate plus inflation rate plus inflation rate times real rate or we can calculate it as nominal rate equal to current market value minus original investment value over the original investment value. Real rate can be calculated as 1 plus nominal rate over 1 plus inflation rate minus 1. The nominal interest rate is the actual monetary price that borrowers pay to lenders to use their money. From our stock analysis, we can see that Amazon has a nominal rate of 2%. To explain that, we can say that, for example, if the nominal rate on a loan is 2%, then borrowers can expect to pay $2 of interest for every $100 loaned to them. We also see that Disney also has 2% of nominal rate, Boeing has negative 1% of the nominal rate, and Spotify has negative 0.06% of nominal rate. From our stock analysis report, we can see that Amazon had a real rate of negative 1.765, Disney had a real rate of negative 1.765, which is same as Amazon. Boeing has a real rate of negative 1.863 and Spotify has a real rate of negative 1.902. The real rates are negative because the inflation is higher than the nominal interest rate. Market risk and specific risk are two different forms of risk that affect assets. All investments assets can be separated by two categories systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Market risk or systematic risk affects a large number of asset classes, whereas specific risk or unsystematic risk only affects an industry or particular company. Systematic risk is the risk of losing investments due to factors such as political risk or microeconomic risk that affects the performance of the overall market. Market risk cannot be mitigated through diversification. However, an investor can hedge against systematic risk. Specific risk or diversifiable risk is the risk of losing an investment due to company or industry-specific hazard. 
unlike systematic risk an investor can only mitigate against unsystematic risk through diversification an investor uses diversification to manage risk by investing in a variety of assets some are four different stock companies spotify is the company that did not do well and that's because they have some firm specific risks for example, according to Chris from his net profit margin analysis, we can see that Spotify has a negative 1.48% of net profit margin, which means they spend more money than they make. Also, from income statement analysis, we can see that Spotify has a negative change of 91.68% in net income. They lose one cent of profit for every dollar of sale. Now I will pass it to Stefan. Hello, my name is Steven Rosado, and I'll be the next narrator. Beta equals market risk. Beta is the definition of a stock's volatility in relation to the market. By definition, the market has a beta of 1.0, and individual stocks are ranked according to how much they deviate from the market. Stocks that have a higher volatility will have a higher beta. This means that they move faster than the market. Stocks that have lower volatility will have a lower beta. This means that they move slower than the market. If a stock has a beta value of 1.0, this means that the stock moves at the same speed of the market. High beta equals high risk. Therefore, there's a higher reward and low beta equals low risk, therefore there's a lower reward. In the next chart, we have calculated the volatility and the risk of the stocks we picked for this presentation based on their beta as of May 1st, 2019. As we can see, Amazon has the highest volatility and deviation from the market by 66% above the market line. We could say that this is the riskiest stock in terms of beta. Disney has the lowest volatility. However, it is still deviated from the market by 68% below the market line. In general, we can say that Disney is safer to invest in compared to the other stocks. Boeing and Spotify also represent a high risk due to their, due to their beta values. However, without knowing it at the beginning of this project, we invested in Amazon, and luckily, the high risk paid off a high reward. Disney, which had a very low risk, also represented earnings. Meanwhile, Boeing and Spotify, both with a high beta risk, made us lose money. Now, I will be talking about the Capital Asset Pricing Model, also known as CAPM. CAPM is an investment theory that shows the relationship between the expected return of an investment and the market risk. As we can see in the formula for the capital asset pricing model, we need three things. The risk-free rate, this we've taken from the 10-year treasury note, the beta value of the stock, and also the expected return from the market. The next chart shows the cap M of our four stocks. For these calculations, we've used the risk-free rate as of May 1st, 2019, the individual beta values for each stock as of May 1st, 2019, and the expected market return of 9%. Therefore, we've come up with the following numbers showed as a percentage. For Amazon, we have a 13.36%. For Disney, we have a 6.89%. For Boeing, we have a 10.98%. And for Spotify, we have a 10.78%. And why is this important? Well, CAPM is important in finance because it gives investors an idea of the required return for an investment on financial assets. And I will be explaining its usage on the next slide on present value. In economics and finance, the present value, also known as present discounted value, is the value of an expected income stream 
determine as of the date evaluation. The present value is always less than or equal to the future value because money has interest earning potential. This characteristic is also known as the time value of money, except during times of negative interest rates, when the present value will be more than the future value. In the next chart, we're focusing our analysis in a hypothetical scenario of receiving a cash flow of $100 within one year from our stocks. For this chart, we're using the CAPM percentage obtained from the previous chart as a rate of return. The number of periods will be one for one year. Based on these numbers and using the formula of present value, we have calculated the following present values for each of our stocks. For Amazon, we have a present value of 88.21. For Disney, we have a present value of 93.55. For Boeing, we have a present value of 90.11. And for Spotify, we have a present value of 90.27. For investors, we always want the present value to be as far away as possible from the cash flow that we will be receiving within a year, because this means that we will be making more money for our investments. In this case, Amazon will be the best stock to invest in based on the present value. Now I will pass it on to Carlos to continue talking about the next topics. The price earnings to growth ratio, also known as the PEG ratio, can be found by using the price to earnings ratio divided by the earnings growth rate. The PEG ratio is used to determine a stock's value while also factoring in the company expected earnings growth and is thought to provide a more complete picture than the PE ratio. Amazon has a 1.5 peg ratio, while Disney's current peg ratio is 2.8, which is a 234% greater than the sector medium for the most recent period. Boeing has a 0.5 peg ratio, which is 51% less than the sector medium for the most recent period. While Spotify has a 0.9 peg ratio, which is greater than the sector medium for the most recent period. Dividends. We use the discount dividend model, but we also mentioned how to find the Gordon's growth model. The discount dividend model requires a forecast of dividends for every year into the future. It's used to estimate the intrinsic value. The discount dividend model formula is found by adding the dividend and the stock price divided by 1 plus the rate to the end power. If the value obtained from the discount dividend model is higher than the current trading price, it's a good decision that you should buy. The Gordon's growth model is used to determine the intrinsic value of a stock based on a future series of dividends that grow at a constant rate. The formula for the Gordon's growth model is the dividend divided by the rate minus the dividend growth rate. If a stock price is less than the intrinsic value, that's a good sign that you should buy the stock. Currently, Amazon doesn't provide any dividends to stockholders, whereas Disney has declared a dividend of $0.88 cents per share payable on January 10, 2019, which is a $0.04 cent increase from the last dividend paid. This has increased the dividend by 3%. Boeing pays $2.12 dividends every quarter, which is much higher than Disney, although Spotify doesn't provide any dividends. Next up is Warren Buffett Rules of Buying a Stock. Warren Buffett has seven rules when it comes to buying a stock. First rule is it has to have an increase in revenue. The second rule, which I think is one of the most important rules, is the company has to have cash. Rule number three has to have a low debt. Rule number four, the stock has to be over $10. Rule number five, invest based on numbers, not opinions. Rule number six, return on equity, usually over 20%. Rule number seven, net profit margin, usually over 10%. Amazon has met the standards according to Buffett's seven rules of buying a stock. Amazon has been increasing its revenue every year and definitely has the cash to grow. My team decided if we had the chance to buy Amazon stock again, knowing what Professor Esri taught us, we would definitely buy more shares. Next up is Walt Disney. This became our second best stock. 
It also meets Warren Buffett's seven rules. For example, it has a low debt equity and a great net profit margin. During April, Disney announced its own streaming service called Disney Plus. And it also released the brand new movie that everyone's talking about, Avengers Endgame. These are one of the few things that has helped our stock increase. Our team decided that we would definitely buy the stock again. So during the beginning of the semester, Boeing was one of the best stocks from our portfolio. But after the 737 plane crash, we lost a lot, a lot of money from this company. This is a great example of some of the things as an investor we can't predict. Although according to Buffett's seven rules, we would probably buy this stock again from this company. Our last stock is Spotify. Even though I have the streaming service, Spotify is a bad stock. And we came to the conclusion that we will never buy this stock again. Some of the reasons is because the return on equity is in over 20%. But most importantly, they don't have any cash. And that sums up our presentation. We are the firm. And we want to thank you for listening.